and in this section we'll be looking into authoring PowerShell DSE solutions. We'll see how we can secure the contents in the configuration file when a MOF file is created. For securing the MOF files, we will make use of certificates and use certificate data in the local configuration manager to encrypt and decrypt the contents of the MOF file. We will have a detailed look into the built-in DSE resources and how to use them. After that, we'll see how to create and publish custom DSE resources and use them in our configurations. By using the built-in configuration data parameter, we'll see how we can parameterize and define data in our configurations. We'll end up this section by looking into the reporting options in DSE and how we can make use of reporting server and retrieve the reports using the reporting web service. Alright, let's start by looking into how to secure the MOF files with sensitive data. By default, PowerShell DEC prevents the use of PS credential parameters in the configuration because it would mean that the password would be stored as plain text in the MOF file which isn't exactly secure. If you try to create a MOF file with a credential parameter value, it will fail with an error denoting that stored passwords in plain text is not recommended. A workaround for this problem is to override the default settings of the LCM by specifying the PS DSC allow plain text password option to be true. This will help to suppress the error and allow generating the MOF file with the password in plain text. But this is not the recommended practice as anyone who has access to the MOF file can now read the passwords stored in the MOF files. A nice solution to this problem will be to use certificates to encrypt the contents of the MOF file and then configure the local configuration manager in the target node to decrypt the contents while enacting this configuration. To successfully encrypt the credentials used to secure a DSE configuration, we need to set up the certificates, keys and thumbprints, making sure that each target node has copies of the certificate and the configuration computer has the thumbprint and the public key. We need to ensure that the local configuration manager configuration data contains the information of the thumbprint of the certificate to decrypt the contents of the MOF file. Finally, we need to create a configuration with credentials and use the public key file to generate the encrypted MOF file. Before we go into the demo and start working on authoring a configuration with secure data, let's have a quick look into the overview of the entire process. To begin with, we need a certificate on the target machine with the private key. We need to export the public key of this certificate into a file and use this in the authoring server. This file will be used to create the MOF files. On the authoring machine, create the configuration with credentials as parameters for the DSC resource. The configuration file should be created with the thumbprint of the certificate that the target node needs to use to decrypt the MOF file. When the configuration script is ran to generate the MOF file, we tell it to use the certificate file to encrypt the PS credentials with and PowerShell won't complain anymore about storing passwords in plain text. When the configuration is either pushed or pulled on the target server, it will use the thumbprint information in the configuration data to use the certificate and decrypt the MOF file before enacting the solution. Let's jump into PowerShell and start creating the configuration with secure data and use that on our development machines. Back to my editor and this is Visual Studio Code. I have a configuration, this is called as unsecure demo config or unsecure config demo. I'm using the inbuilt file DAC resource and I'm using the credential parameter over here to create this particular file in the Windows temp directory. And the file is called as credential demo one and it should have this contents over there. Because I'm using the credential parameter and I'm passing the PS credentials as parameters to the configuration file, to make this run, I have used the PS DAC allow plain text password as true as the configuration data, which is passed to the configuration. So before we run this configuration, I want to show you what if we don't use the PS DAC allow plain text password property in this particular configuration and run this configuration. So I'm going to comment it out and then go into PowerShell. So if first I have to create a credential, so I'm going to create a credentials and I'm just saying get credential. So this will prompt me for entering my credential. So I'm going to enter my credential over here. And then I'm going to use this credential to create the configuration or to run the configuration. So I have this unsecure config demo and I'm going to pass the credentials. If I run this now, you can see that I get an error saying that converting and storing encrypted passwords as plain text is not recommended. So that means 
PowerShell by default doesn't allow me to store credentials as plain text. So to override this default behavior, we can go back to our Visual Studio Code editor and uncomment this option so that we can override the default settings of NCM and say that, okay, maybe this is for a demo purpose. I would just want to store the passwords as plain text. Going back to our editor. Now, if I run the unsecure demo, I'm going to pass the credentials. If I run it now, it didn't complain about an error or something. It just generated the mob file. The only thing is that this mob file will contain my password as plain text. I'm not going to open it because you can see my password now. What we can do is we can start the DSC configuration minus wait minus verbose and I'm going to give the path config demo. I'm using the wait and verbose parameters so that we can see the output of the configuration that is running. And if I press enter now, what it did is that on the test section, it tried to find the file and didn't find the file and in the set it is going to create the file for me. So basically if I am going back to my windows, see windows temp. I can see that the credential demo one file is created with this particular contents inside. So that's how you override it. Now let's go back and see how to do this in a nice way. So let's use certificates to create the configuration and then encrypt it using the public key and then using the private key. Let's try to decrypt the certificate. I have this another configuration file. This is called a secure config demo and I have the same resource over here. The only thing is that I have an extra local configuration manager setting with a certificate ID and I'm passing a thumbprint here to the configuration data. I'm using this thumbprint to set my local configuration manager so that when this configuration is pushed to the LCM, it can use the thumbprint information and find the particular certificate, use the private key of the certificate to decrypt the configuration and enact it on the machine. Rest is all same. I'm not using the PSDSC allow plain text password option to override the default settings. Instead of that, I'm using the thumbprint and I'm using the certificate file that is used to encrypt this file and I'm using thumbprint to decrypt the mock file. So we need a certificate before that. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a self-signed certificate over here, which is only for demo purposes. For production, you should not use a self-signed certificate. I'm using the new self-signed certificate commandlet and I'm creating a certificate with the DNS name, DAC encrypt certification. The next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export the public key of the certificate to this particular file. And then if you see in my configuration, I'm using the same file to encrypt my MOB file. And the last step is to check whether the certificate is stored on my local computer store. So I'm going to get child item and to see what is the certificates that is available on my store. Also, what we can do is that we can copy the thumbprint of that certificate and use that in our configuration, which is right now empty. So we need to run this script first, generate the certificate, generate the file with the public key, and then also find the thumbprint of the certificate, which we generated. Later, we'll use the thumbprint in our configuration file, and then we'll run the configuration file. So back to the PowerShell window, I have this create certificate.ps1 file. I'm going to run it. And you can see that it created the certificate. And then basically this is the output of the get child item. But basically you can see that it has created the file with the public key. I have to find what is my certificate. All right. So you can see that this is the certificate which we have created. And this is the thumbprint which we want. I'm going to copy this one and going back to my editor paste that thumbprint over here so that when the configuration is run it can use this thumbprint information to enact this configuration to decrypt this configuration that's all what we want so let's run this one now going back to my powershell window i'm cleaning it and then secure config demo minus credential credential if you can look into now, we have two mob files generated. One is for the local configuration manager with the thumbprint information. So going back to the editor, you can see that I have a local configuration manager and I'm putting the certificate ID of the node.thumbprint. So this information is required for the LCM to decrypt the certificate. And then the other mob file is the mob file of the configuration. So first we need to set up a local configuration manager. So I'm going to set DSC local configuration manager minus path and it's the secure DSC configuration, I'm in force, await, 
I'm going to enter so the local configuration manager is set up so let's look into the DAC local configuration manager you can see that it has a certificate ID now present with this this is going to use the certificate whenever a secure configuration is pushed to the LCM now the LCM is using this certificate to decrypt the configuration all right the next step is to actually start the DAC configuration now but well, before that let's have a look into the mob file because it should be encrypted now and I'm not afraid of losing my password so if I click on the mob file, oh, that's pretty good. So you can see that the password is now encrypted. It's not as plain text. So you cannot actually see this password in the mob file, but when the configuration is available to the LCM, it can use the certificate ID to decrypt it. Let's go back to PowerShell and let's say start DSC configuration, minus verbose, minus wait, spot, secure config demo. I enter it. The file is not found. It's going to create a new file and probably have the contents as we saw earlier let's go back to the temporary location so this is the new file that is created it does the contents as we have put it in the configuration that's how you secure your mob files with sensitive information